Hello, my name is Terry. This video will cover our investigation of the Ray County Museum located in Richmond, Missouri. I had intended to conduct a sit-down interview with the curator of the museum, but because of limited time I wasn't able to do this. We're planning a follow-up investigation and I'll be attempting this later, going over the stories of why the site is haunted, who is haunting the site, and what her personal experiences are inside the building and those of the people who visited. This video will cover the footage that we documented during our investigation. I will save the historical information for a separate video in the future after my interview with the curator. The first clip is from the Indian Artifacts Room. The camera was left running unattended. Another individual almost walked in on the camera. You can see them entering the room. When they realize that a camera is running inside the room, they leave the area. After they do this, you'll hear a male EVP voice speak up. It appears to be saying, checking out the room. Apparently, it is one entity commenting probably to another entity on what we were attempting to do. This clip was recorded at the foot of the main stairway at the entryway. An unexplained flash of light occurred. It is located down the dark hallway to the right of the stairs. I have a still photo and a zoom version of this. If you look carefully, I'd initially thought at the far end of the hallway a mirror might have been reflecting light, causing this illumination. But I had to reject this theory because during the entire duration of the video, no light can be seen reflecting into the mirror at the far end of the hallway. Without that as the light source, there's no explanation for what could be illuminating whatever it is that's down this hallway. The following clip was recorded on the second floor. A female investigator is trying to entice one of the entities into playing with the flashlight that she's offering it. If you'll listen carefully, you'll hear a female voice, not of the investigator, but of a child saying the word flashlight. There were no children present during this investigation. This is clearly an intelligent entity recognizing what is being offered and it's commenting on it back to the investigator. All right, what kind of game do you want to play? I'll let you braid my hair. Put on the flashlight. While on the second floor, I thought I heard a voice say the word, hey. I spoke up and asked if anyone had said that. A voice pipes up and says the word, no. But this is none of our group members. The next clip contains no paranormal evidence. It's a value because it's documenting several investigators encountering a cold spot. I encountered this myself in another area of the building where you could feel an intense cold presence. This was also documented by the mail meter when its alarms were triggered during a cold spot event. James, are you guys moving something again? Trina. Trina, oh my legs are green. It's freezing. 
This clip was recorded at the entryway of the main building. A female EVP voice can clearly be heard, but I can't quite make out what is being said. During an EVP session on the second floor, one of the investigators challenged the entity to speak up more clearly in a louder voice. It did reply and it said the word no. The person who was asking the question heard the reply with their ears and they said the word mark to mark that point in time that they'd heard a reply. This is one of those instances where it's not an EVP voice but an actual disembodied voice that individuals are hearing because EVP voices can only be heard on retrieval of the voice from the equipment whereas these voices are actually heard by ear. Do you want to play a game? Can you say that louder? Mark. Can you say that louder? Can you say that louder? Can you say that louder? The following clip was recorded in the main hallway on the second floor. This was during an EVP session. The investigator asked the entity what its favorite color was. What's your favorite color again? After she'd asked this question, there was a long gap in time, but an EVP voice replied and it says the color red. This is an intelligent entity replying to a question put directly to it. This is not a residual haunting, this is an intelligent individual replying to questions. The one thing that is interesting though is why the long delay between the question being asked and the reply. This is either because they're out of sync time-wise with us or it may have required some time for it to gather the strength it needed to reply to the question. The exact reason for this delay in the answering of the question is unknown and we're strictly speculating. While the camera was still located on the second floor, several group members had gone downstairs to say goodbye to their friends who couldn't spend the entire night for the investigation. When you listen very carefully, you'll hear one of the women downstairs saying a race car or something. After she says this, a male EVP voice pipes up and says the word help. This is clearly not one of the people downstairs talking and it's not part of their conversation. This, I believe, is actually coming from somewhere on the second floor. In the following clip, several women can be heard ascending the stairway at the far end of the hall. Their voices can clearly be heard, but among their voices is a loud female EVP voice. This does not match the voice of any of the individuals present this night, and it also is not part of the conversation going on among the women. It's out of place with what is being said. It's as if some other thing is communicating with something else and we don't know what it is.
following clip is very interesting. It was recorded in the Indian artifact room. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the sound of something walking across the floors as the floorboards squeak under the weight of footsteps. But the interesting fact is, is that everyone is in the break room area on the first floor. There is no one upstairs at this time. Can't account for this. This is an interesting sound and it's also going on while the motion sensors are present. So whatever it is that's moving around inside the room is not triggering the motion sensors. This clip was also recorded in the Indian artifact room. This one is very interesting in that it is of something playing a piano. I have to get back with the curator of the building to find out if there are more than one pianos present inside the building as a potential source for these sounds. But the one that is located on the second floor down at the other end of the hallway does not function. I tried pressing the keys earlier to test it to see if it played because I wanted to conduct some tests with it. But when you press the keys, it produces no sound. But clearly in this clip, which I will play at different levels of gain, you'll hear individual keynotes from a piano being played. I've had this happen at places like Tri-County Truck Stop, where a piano upstairs could be heard being played while no one was there. The interesting thing about that situation was is that when the piano was later removed and the building abandoned, no piano notes were ever heard at that site from that point forward. So the physical placement of the piano was essential during that particular instance in the being able to hear the notes. But that piano was functional. This one is not. following clip would have been a total loss if it hadn't been for Dana having her voice recorder running at the time the cameras were running. The cameras were rolling during this event, but for some reason all of the cameras shut down at this point, and I have no accounting for this. It's not because of the memory cards becoming full or the batteries becoming drained. For some unknown reason, the cameras stopped rolling. However, during the EVP session, Dana, who had her voice recorder running, was able to capture the event that was going on on her voice recorder, and I'll combine her audio with a video clip from the hallway to better illustrate what was going on. She had asked several questions, and during this session, I had heard a voice, as did several others, it was a whispery voice, but we heard it with our ears, which means it's not an EVP voice, but a disembodied voice. What I had heard, though, was a single word, but at least that's as far as I could ascertain from the sound that I heard. What was recorded was the phrase, get out. Something was telling us that it wanted us out of those two rooms that were at the far end of the hallway and it was trying to motivate us to leave. If you make it flick again, we'll go down to the other end of the hall and we won't bother you. But you have to make the lights flick. Walking downstairs. 
Can you make them flick and we'll leave? Did you hear that? Was that someone at the other end? No, that was a that was a voice. That was a whisper. And we're not whispering. We're not supposed that to whisper. That was very, that was like between you two. Right? Yeah, it was right here. Well, I've got this going, so. That was the weirdest thing. I heard it. The following clip was also recorded in the Indian Artifact Room. And during this clip, you'll hear the sounds of the Melmeter. This is a very high-end version of the Melmeter, which includes a cold spot detection, an EMF field detection, shadow detection. This unit is being triggered while no one is in the room. This is an interesting fact because these meters are detecting pieces of information that is imperceptible to the human eye or ear and it's being triggered by something that you can't see in this room. Many people criticize traditional EMF meters because they pick up man-made sources. In the following clip, I have my Trifield Natural Meter, which detects only natural forms of EMF. It's immune to all man-made sources. It can clearly be heard being triggered during an event, while no one is present in the room or in the hallway. Throughout the night, this meter was triggered four times. I'm only going to play a single one of these clips to show you a presentation of what it is during these events when EMF is encountered by Trifield Natural Meters. This is interesting because no man-made source can be accepted as the source of what's triggering this meter. It has to be a natural form of EMF and it's a quite strong reading from the sound that the meter is producing. I'd also like to thank the curator of the museum for allowing us to conduct this investigation and the other PTF members. We're looking forward to doing a follow-up investigation in which I'll try and get the sit-down with the curator to get more information about the historical aspects of the building, the hauntings that people are experiencing, and her own personal accounts of what's going on inside the building. Thank you very much.